thank you, everyone. Um, this leads on directly from the last presentation um, and is specifically looking at uh, the uh, transcribing um, and machine tra text recognition of uh, the manuscripts. Um, and online, we have uh, Sarah and Sadeep, I think. Are you two there? Um, uh, there's uh, the three of us. We, we, they are online, aren't they? I guess. Hopefully. Um, so um, the, the process that we've been going through for the last uh, year or so is, um, well, in fact, going back before that, sorry, um, we have three, uh, we, we had two existing um, OCR systems in, uh, for Wikisource. Um, for, first of all, we had Google OCR, and then we added uh, Tesseract um, a, a couple of years after that. And the, the project in the last year has been to add a new um, uh, system called Transcribus to the, 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 the set of OCR tools available. Um, so you can see here, um, this is a, a, an English language handwritten uh, manuscript. Um, and the, I don't know if you can quite read the text, but it's, um, this is using a generic uh, English language uh, model to transcribe it. So it's not particularly great. Um, but training a, a specific model uh, gets us um, much higher quality than that. Uh, here's, here's another example uh, in uh, Italian. Um, and the, um, the, so Transcribus has about 80, I think 85 uh, different models available in different languages. Um, and for specific bodies of, of work, we can go through and um, uh, anyone involved in Wikisource can um, learn to train a OCR model. Um, and uh, I think Sara is going to take over now and talk us through. Sorry? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm afraid I can't listen. Can you hear me? Off the top of my head. We're not broadcasted yet. Would you like to be broadcasted the screen now? Okay, hold on. I'll let the evil crew know. Would you like to be broadcasted to the screen at the same time? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the question was what are the languages that are available Latin scripts? And they're not. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of different scripts, and the whole point of, of the project is that it's it's opening up the possibility of of um, any script basically, um, and um, yeah, th there's certain like requirements for for the um, the minimum number of pages you need to to train a model and things like that. And um, I think uh, if we switch over to Sara now. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, I, I, does anyone know if they can hear us? Uh, oh, right. Hello, have you found it? Can you hear me? Sarah, can you hear us? Are you there? Or, or Sadiq? Yes, I can hear you. Um, c can you say something, Sarah? I'm trying to talk, uh, but I'm not sure that you can hear me. But she's speaking but now. She's speaking she's speaking now. now. She's <laughs> Hi, so sorry. You just give us a little time. You're trying to solve some technical difficulties. Um, 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 um. Uh, sorry, try again. Yeah, can you hear me now? That's sounding better. Yep. Yeah, go for it. Okay. 
Uh, hello, everyone, and thanks, Sam, for the introduction. Uh, I will explain you what is Transcribus. So Transcribus uh, is a uh, an platform and uh, an early designer to simplify the time-consuming and uh, laborious work with uh, historical uh, documents. So the main idea behind uh, this platform is uh, to help uh, uh, researchers uh, and uh, users who want to work with uh, uh, historical documents uh, and uh, give them the opportunity to train uh, AI models uh, to automatically transcribe their documents. Uh, and the main goal is to help people who can't read uh, all scripts uh, or to faster the transcription process so people can concentrate more on the content. Next slide. Um, what does Transcribus may, make possible? Uh, the main thing is the automatic transcription of unwritten and printed documents. Uh, Sam will show you what is possible with, with uh, the um, OCR integration in a Wikisource. Uh, so you can automatically transcribe uh, an image, uh, unwritten or printed. Uh, and uh, right now we have more than uh, 100 public models trained by the Transcribus community and 11 have been integrated in the wiki um, media OCR. But it's also possible to train AI models uh, for any languages uh, and script uh, without the need uh, to, without coding skills uh, or uh, fancy equipment, just, you can just, a laptop uh, and an internet connection is uh, enough to train a model. Um, this collaboration uh, between uh, um, Wikisource uh, and the ReadCop, uh, which is the cooperative behind Transcribus, uh, started thanks to the aligned values uh, that we have. Uh, as you know, the Wikimedia movement uh, is community-led, uh, mission-driven, and profit. Uh, Transcribus is a sustained and developed by ReadCop, uh, a cooperative, uh, and uh, our motto is uh, purpose before profit, uh, and uh, we try to support as best as we can educational and profit uh, initiative uh, and also for us the community is very important uh, and has a big voice uh, in developing the, the platform. Um, Sam show has uh, um, the available model uh, but what you can do when no model is available uh, for the language script of your document uh, at this point uh, you need to train uh, a model for your documents. So you need to teach a computer how to read your documents. And this is a possible in Wikisource. You need to switch to the Transcribus platform to do that. I will just give you a, a um, technical uh, background. So what we are using here is machine learning. Machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence and it focuses on the development of algorithms and models that enable computers to autonomously learn from data without being specifically programmed for every task. And uh, thanks to the training, uh, we get uh, a model. But what is a model? The model is the output of the training process what was learned uh, by the machine learning uh, algorithm. Uh, model learned to identify patterns uh, with the training data and generalize the learned knowledge, uh, making prediction uh, on new data that was unutilized uh, during the training phase. So in our case, uh, uh, to train uh, an unwritten text recognition model, uh, we give uh, uh, some uh, images uh, and the corresponding transcription to the machine uh, the machine learn on our transcription and the result is a model that, can, that is able to generalize its knowledge and transcribe new uh, pages. Um, when we train a model, we need uh, first, uh, before starting the training, uh, we need to have our ground route. Ground route is a technical term used in machine learning and is the yeah. labeled data Yes. Um, just, just wanted to uh, make sure that the slides are also changing because it was stuck at the, um, the last slide. Sorry, I move on. I forgot to tell next slide. Okay. 
Yeah, here. Thank you. Here is uh, the um, uh, so our ground truth. Um, in our case, uh, the ground truth is uh, the images and the transcription uh, we have done manually. And during the training, we need to split uh, our ground truth in two groups: uh, the training set, uh, which are the images and transcription on which the model learn, and the validation set, uh, which is uh, ten, around 10% 10 of the training set uh, and uh, the validation set uh, is the pages on which the model attests its accuracy and so in this way we can tell how well the model performs. Next slide. Um, so now we will see the steps to train uh, a model. Uh, uh, first, you need uh, to create uh, an account uh, in the Transcribes platform. Uh, creating an account uh, is uh, free. And then uh, uh, you need to create a collection, upload uh, some images, uh, do the transcription and start the training. And next slide, uh, we will see it uh, step by step uh, with uh, this video. Okay, can we switch? Okay. Uh, so this is uh, the... Um, the interface of uh, Transcribus, uh, you see there is the work desk uh, where you we work uh, and then uh, the training tab, uh, we will use it later only to train uh, uh, your, uh, uh, your models. And uh, um, is uh, the video running? I think the video isn't isn't working. Someone needs to play the video in the slide. Go to the slide and Okay. Um, oh, no, we're, we're just trying to figure it out. Okay, in the meantime, I can just explain you the process. So after that... Uh, uh, oh, there's a question if there is a link to the video. Uh, okay, we found it. Yes, this uh, is I, one. Yeah. Okay, can you play the video? Thanks. Um, yes, this uh, is uh, the, the interface uh, and you see we are working uh, on the work desk uh, right now and then there is the training uh, tab uh, here. But, uh, uh, the first step uh, is to create uh, a collection. Uh, in this case, uh, I created just the Wiki Mania 2023 collection uh, and uh, inside a and then you upload your documents inside the collection. So the collection are based on fold, are like the folders and inside this folder you have your documents. So here you can upload the, your documents. So the one you will use to train your model. You can upload images in JPEG or PNG format up to 10 megabytes per image or PDF. In this case, uh, I'm uploading 30 images from uh, um, uh, Javanese manuscript from uh, I took it from uh, Wikisource. So I select the pages that I want to upload, uh, and uh, here you see it. Uh, um, you can uh, decide the name uh, to give uh, to your uh, document, uh, and then you can do the the upload. Let me just check that uh, all the images uh, are there. Submit uh, the upload. And then uh, there is the jobs tab uh, where you can check uh, the status uh, of your jobs uh, and uh, how the upload uh, is, uh, is going. It could take uh, 
some seconds uh, or a minute, it depends on the amount of pages you are uploading, and then we can open uh, the document. Uh, here you see all uh, the images I uh, have uploaded. Uh, the first step to do now is to run uh, the layout recognition. Uh, the layout recognition uh, uh, enables us to detect uh, the text regions uh, and the lines uh, of text, uh, and this uh, is uh, an essential step uh, before uh, transcribing manually our documents uh, to create the ground truth uh, to train the model on it. So because the um, because the Transcribus is working in this way, you need first to run the layout recognition and Transcribus uh, detects, automatically detects lines uh, and you get uh, uh, the lines to transcribe. Mm. And then we open a page. Uh, this uh, is uh, the automatic text recognition, uh, the automatic layout recognition. You see the regions, uh, the lines. Uh, um, if there are some errors, uh, like here, some small lines, uh, um, who has been detected incorrectly, you can just uh, select them uh, and cancel them. Uh, but usually the layout recognition works fine. And then you can start uh, typing uh, your uh, transcription. Uh, to create uh, the ground truth. Uh, there is also the possibility to um, add uh, special characters. Uh, you go to the virtual keyboard uh, and here you can uh, uh, specify which special characters uh, you want to add. Uh, in this case, I add the Javanese Unicode uh, and then uh, you can open the virtual keyboard in the editor uh, and add them, uh, the special characters uh, manually. Or another option, if you already have uh, the transcription of these documents, uh, in our case, the transcription are already there in a wiki source, uh, you can copy and paste uh, the transcription uh, from wiki source uh, to Transcribus. Uh, the only downside here is that uh, uh, as it is now, you need, you need to do it uh, manually, line by line, uh, so it's not possible to copy the entire text. Uh, uh, because if you try to do it, all and ups in the first line uh, and uh, the, the match uh, isn't correct, uh, but we are trying to work on it. So we hope that uh, soon it will be possible to copy the entire text uh, and, and assign it uh, automatically to the correct uh, line. When you have uh, finished the transcription, you save uh, your page uh, as a uh, ground truth. So it means that uh, it's ready and can be used uh, to train uh, your model. Um, now, here we have 30 pages uh, of ground truth. Uh, you need to have at least 25 pages of ground truth to train a model. And now we can go to the training uh, page. And here, uh, just uh, select the collection with your ground truth. Um, you are asked to add some details about the model, like uh, a name, a description, the language, uh, and uh, the centuries of the documents. Uh, in this first step, uh, when you train a model, the model is by default private, uh, so only you can see it uh, and use it. Uh, so these metadata are just for you. But if you want to make uh, your model public uh, and also uh, make it public to people on Wikisource, uh, uh, it's good to have uh, a, a detailed description here just to make people understand uh, on which documents you have trained your model and so on which documents they can use uh, a mod this model. Then you are asked uh, to select uh, the training data. Uh, here you can uh, select uh, the documents uh, or uh, single uh, pages, uh, depends on which pages you have worked on. And the next step uh, is to select uh, the validation uh, data. So the pages uh, on which uh, uh, the model uh, will attest its accuracy. Um, our recommendation uh, is to automatically uh, assign 10% uh, of the training data to the validation data. And in this way, it is automatically selected uh, and uh, you're sure that uh, the validation data is, uh, is good and it's a real, um, example of your ground truth. In the last page, uh, you see a recap uh, and also some advanced settings. If, 
it's your first training, uh, leave the number of epochs and the list toppings as uh, it is. Uh, you can also add uh, a base model, it means uh, a model that uh, has been trained uh, previously by someone else uh, and it can help to uh, improve uh, the knowledge of your model, but pay attention that a base model needs to be trained on a similar hand uh, and uh, languages, uh, language. And then you can start uh, training your model. You go to the jobs table uh, and you see the status uh, of the training. Uh, the training can take uh, from uh, a couple of hours to a couple of days uh, and you will receive an email when the training is uh, finished. Uh, at this point, uh, you can go to the model manager and see the, your training model, uh, but also all the public models that are available. Uh, and uh, we can go to the Balinese model, uh, for instance, and here you see, this is the public model. You see who created it, uh, um, on how many words were trained, uh, and uh, especially this number, in this case, uh, 0. Uh, um, 47 percent. Uh, this is the Carter error rate, uh, so the performance uh, uh, of uh, the, the model. Um, uh, it means how many errors the model will do on new pages. Uh, and in this case, uh, the Carter error rate is very low, it's below 1 percent, uh, and it means that uh, uh, the model will transcribe the around 99 uh, characters correctly and will make only one error. So if we can go back uh, to the uh, slides, uh, um, I would just uh, show you um, the, what to expect uh, when you train a model and how many grants, grant truth you need. Um, uh, yeah, we're, we're just getting the slides back. One moment. Okay. So the amount of uh, grant truth for printed text uh, is lower than uh, for uh, handwritten documents uh, and uh, usually uh, in written text recognition uh, it's better than uh, standard OCR for uh, historical uh, prints uh, and uh, newspapers because uh, it's, it's specifically trained uh, on that type of uh, um, script. Uh, for printed text, uh, you just need uh, around 5,000 words, so 20 pages uh, of transcri uh, transcribed pages. Uh, and the Carter error rate uh, you can reach uh, is uh, between 0.5% uh, and uh, 2%. Uh, um, if you want to train uh, a model uh, on unwritten documents, uh, the ground router, so the number of transcription uh, should increase uh, if you have just uh, one hand uh, and single, simple writing. Uh, um, you need uh, 10,000 words uh, and the expected Carter rate is between 2 and 4 percent. Uh, if there are several hands uh, all seen during the training, uh, you need uh, several 10,000 words, so 10,000 words for each hand uh, and the Carter rate will be between 4 and 6. Uh, and uh, if you have many hands, you want to create a very general model that is capable to deal with uh, hands of the same period, but also had hands not seen during the training, you need more than uh, 100,000 words. Uh, um, and the Carter rate will be between 6 and 8%, because it's also capable to uh, transcribe new hands, uh, but the number of errors increase. N next slide, uh, and when you have trained uh, your model uh, and you want to share this model with Wikisource, uh, First, you need to send an email uh, to the transcribers team uh, and ask uh, to make your model public and we will get back to you asking you some questions of your model like who needs to be credited for it, uh, a short description uh, to help users to understand uh, what this model is uh, um, can do. Uh, and then uh, you, uh, in the Wikimedia OCR tool, uh, you can make a request uh, to add uh, the model uh, to add this new model from Transcribus uh, to the OCR tool. Uh, and in this way, it will be integrated uh, in the uh, Wikisource. Now, um, I go, I pass the, um, the stage to set people for this last uh, slide. I think uh, Sam can share about the 
what's the progress on the Polynesian and the German governance model? Then I can talk about the resources of manuscripts. We have only a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, the, so, the, the, yeah, the Balinese uh, model is, um, as Sarah was saying, is um, uh, quite high accuracy um, and is um, uh, it's now available um, in the OCR advanced options form, which is at ocr.wmcloud.org, um, and uh, very soon it will be available um, on uh, Wikisource as well via the, the normal OCR drop-down options. Um, th there's a, a little bit more work to be done uh, to make that available. Um, uh, and uh, that's the same work that will need to be done for any um, future um, model that will be trained. Um, we're not making everything available on through the uh, Wikisource um, user interface yet. Uh, we're just setting, like for each Wikisource, we're setting one default model. Um, that's just for the time being. I think I think at, at some point we'll um, make it a, a, an easier to use interface and some more documentation and some more training um, so that people can choose uh, whichever is the most suitable model. Um, you know, especially on multilingual Wikisource, that's going to be necessary. Um, but also on, on other Wikisources, I, uh, that's um, going to be pretty useful as well. Um, uh, yeah, Sadiq, is there anything to add there? Yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll add about the Learning Partners Network. So, I like, we do realize that, you know, this, uh, this, this process for newbies to transcribers to working with manuscript uh, can be overwhelming and includes a lot of uh, different moving pieces. And to support uh, communities and new languages uh, in this process, we have launched, uh, we are launching a learning partners network for Wikisource Loves Manuscripts. And uh, we are accepting applications or need a needs assessment survey. We are uh, asking people to fill that if you are interested in working with manuscripts. And we'll be working with a smaller cohort out of the interested people and we'll be supporting them in creating, uh, in, in not just creating their uh, models uh, with transcribers, but also uh, with digitization where PPIM, the work that they uh, talked about before with this, We'll be having workshops, uh, in-depth workshops uh, with transcribers, with PPIM, and and also, you know, if there's any um, uh, any funds that you need, so a brand making related conversation. We are we, we will be supporting the entire project from uh, the beginning to the end, um, and and we we're hoping that by March or April we will have. Uh, four to five communities uh, which are then, uh, which have proposed their project and then able to kick them off, apply for funding and start them uh, in the next fiscal year. Um, next uh, slide, uh, we just have some, yeah, I don't think we have time for it, um, but thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah, I don't think we've got time for questions. Is that right? Or we do have time? No? Yeah? Uh, we might as well. Oh, yep. Uh, yeah, so the, the question was, is the output going to include HOCR? Um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure no, specifically HOCR, but it is, uh, there's a different um, dialect for uh, mapping word coordinates and, and line coordinates called PAGE. Um, pa page oh, I can't remember what it stands for. Um, and yes, that is available, um, and we haven't, we, we haven't done any sort of technical connecting of what that will mean, but it's definitely... It's a possibility and, um, you know, I can imagine all sorts of things of like writing that back into the deja vu files or, um, yeah, the, there's definitely heaps of scope for further development there, um, definitely. Okay, thank you for this talk. It's very interesting because I 
I've worked on OCR projects for many, many years. And I've been using Abbey Fire Eater. Oops, my version's 11, 14, 15. So how does Transcribus' performance compare to Abbey OCR's performance? Like, has anyone done any comparisons? Uh, good question. Uh, Sarah, maybe you have some background on that? Mm, I think there are some papers uh, doing uh, some comparisons. Uh, uh, I think the uh, some archive in Norway or Sweden uh, tried to do a comparison between uh, different OCR and HDR tools. Uh, so if you can write me an email, I will send you a more detail, uh, um, some details about this paper. Usually, so and written text recognition uh, in general is better than OCR because it can be trained uh, on uh, uh, the, the script. So it takes more time uh, to be trained before, uh, but then you get uh, a better output. Okay, yeah. And does Transcribus support um, Internet IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet? Like, if you try to train IPA handwriting, does it work well? Or... Uh, mm, no, I don't think uh, mm, Do you that. Know? No, it's not possible. Not possible, right? No. Okay. What if what if the document in itself is an IPA? Like, what if someone has written something in IPA and then they are trying to train it in IPA? Like, Yeah, I think um, we need. It, sometimes uh, machine learning uh, is uh, is capable to uh, learn uh, these certain things, uh, uh, but I don't have any experience on it. So um, we need to do some tests before saying, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really possible. I think we're out of time now. Thank you, everyone. Um, hi. Sorry. Um, there is a question from the chat saying, I wonder how to get transcripts from medieval French text. <laughs> if that's something that is able to be answered. Uh, I think it is possible. Uh, I don't know if there's an existing model, but... Um, be possible, I think, yeah. Um, but yeah, get in touch and we'll figure it out. 